tell them your name? I'm Anne Marie. Anne Marie, uh, she was actually standing in front of Keith Ellison's car, and she's the woman who was yelling, Me too, Ellison, me too. We don't want a domestic abuser. So, of course, the media, when they saw her do that, they literally turned their cameras away. And luckily, George was there, so he got it all on camera. But tell them, George, what the media did when they saw and uh, protesting Keith Ellison and confronting him about her own uh, story of domestic violence. Two channels, I believe, Fox 9 and WCCO, and they filmed everything. They covered the whole story, but, but none of it made on the news. Yeah, and but no, they were recording it, and they have it. We they, have video they, they, of them they turning their cameras off. Absolutely, but none of it made it on, on the news. Yeah. Covered up completely. Yeah. I saw him walking away like a coward with his head down and his girlfriend walking behind him and uh, he gets in the car without her. I just, it was just like, you know, what are you doing? You know, and, and this emotion bubbled up inside of me and if they saw that video, they probably heard me screaming. And I was so emotional in that moment, in that time, because it just was like, how dare you? How dare you be an abuser of women, walk away Away from your girlfriend, shut the door on her, and then and put his head her down. Outside the door, and put his head down. And when you were when down. you were confronting him, and you were yeah. saying, "Me too, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Ellison. Me too, Keith." He actually put his hand, and we have pictures of this too because we got it from all angles of him putting his hand in his head, and he was just you know trying to really duck low because people were taking pictures and knocking on the window, and of course he actually locked his girlfriend out of the car, and so he yeah. left her like a coward yeah. uh, in front of everyone, and, and it's not like she would have faced a threat because we're not violent no. people. I think we have more men than women here who are actually here to show up and uh, basically stand against Keith Ellison becoming attorney general uh, because they respect women. And, you know, most men understand that they wouldn't be on this planet, they wouldn't be men without, uh, you know, their mothers and women who nurtured them. And so any man who is going to put his hands on a woman is a coward, especially a man who wants to be the uh, attorney general, which is the top cop. We had a police officer that was killed in uh, shot in Minneapolis and at, at a pizza shack, and he he was in support of the uh, the cop killers. He supported yeah. the cop killers. So. Yeah, and. And uh, it's important to note that Doug, Doug Wardlow, who is running against Keith Ellison, has actually been endorsed by the police in Minnesota because he actually stands with the police and he doesn't support Antifa. Hey, Doug Wardlow's alive! Woo! Doug, good luck! Good Doug! Doug, please hold Keith Ellison accountable for his abuse of women tonight. This is Doug Wardlow, the Republican challenger. So the candidates are arriving. Is Keith Ellison going to drop out of the debate or is he going to arrive and walk through the door for the debate? Look, Keith Ellison has to come through this door. As you saw, as you just saw right now, Doug Wardlow, he's the Republican challenger. He just walked through this door. It's neck and neck. And Keith Ellison needs to make the decision. Is he going to be a coward and avoid me and all of these brave Minnesota voters? This is a police report from 2005 from Amy Alexander, who was dating Keith Ellison, and she accused him of abuse. It's documented here by the police. That's an officer right there with the St. Paul police. This is from the Minneapolis police. Legitimate police report. Here is a medical record from Karen Monahan in which she details the physical and emotional abuse. This is her doctor's note. Can we give you a copy of this? Because we have a lot of copies. If the moderators want to use this for the debate tonight, because we find it to be extremely important, and I'll give you a copy so you can have it for yourself. But this is a um, medical record that Karen Monahan, who is one of the women who Keith Ellison even confirmed that he was dating her. She's a Democrat activist. That's her medical record. She released it, and she details the abuse. And if you flip it over, it's another side of a police report from 2005 from Amy Alexander, who's another Democrat activist woman who dated Keith Ellison, and uh, she accused him of domestic violence. And if you flip over the report, you can actually see that the officer's notes say that she was assaulted by Keith Ellison. So I really think that this should be included in the debate tonight because Keith Ellison really has a lot to answer to. Do you have any other paperwork? You'd want? I can take this in now. Well, we have other this. copies, but if you can, this is all confirmed. You can look it up online no, as well. I, I, but I want them to know what you have out here, so I will bring this in. Okay, we are holding Keith Ellison accountable because he's running to be the leading legal authority in the state of Minnesota, which is 
attorney general. Basically, he'd be in charge of all police officers and all lawyers here in the state. And the cops would take orders from him. And this is a guy who is a, um, he, he takes pride in being the first Muslim elected to Congress. He Maybe is women. a Sharia advocate and he abuses women. And reason the reason this is important is because, um, you know, as, as a devout Muslim under Sharia, women are allowed to be beaten, right? So women are property. And so for Keith Ellison, he probably doesn't even think he's done anything wrong um, when people have accused him of beating women because for him, he's allowed to. He's allowed to beat women. It's normal behavior for him, right? This is a guy who wants to be attorney general, yet he has endorsed Antifa. All officers want to go home to their families at the end of the night. And so Antifa has been, de has been designated as an official domestic terrorist organization by the Department of state in this country and there are countless videos of them uh, saying put a pig in a blanket kill the cops all this stuff so uh you know <laughs> this is why there are multiple reasons why he's friends with louis farrakhan who said hitler was a very good man he is a supporter of linda sarsour who called for jihad against president trump he's endorsed by care which is designated as a terrorist organization and has ties to other terrorists like Siraj Wahaj and his family, the imam in New York City who's a co-conspirator in the 1993 World Trade Center bombing and whose three family members along with two other suspects were just arrested for training kids to be jihadi school shooters and they were planning a terrorist attack at Atlanta Grady Hospital. So these are very bad people and this is all people who Keith Ellison is friends with. He's also friends, well, he's friends with Louis Farrakhan and he had a private dinner with Farrakhan who's a Jew hater and also the president of Iran who has said death to America, death to Jews, death to Israel, all right? So, again, do you want this guy to be your attorney general? He is going to have the power to decide whether or not, um, you know, you can prosecute people who commit acts of domestic violence, you can prosecute people who commit acts of terrorism. If he becomes attorney general, he can change the law so that Sharia crimes are completely permissible. I have a question. Um, what about the daycare Somali daycare? Well, there's yeah, there's also Somali daycare fraud. So you have uh, you have these uh, fake daycares which are popping up that are being run by Somali immigrants that are actually being uh, used as funds. And basically, Somalis are going in and funneling funds for Al Shabaab. And so they're using these daycares as a front to raise money for Al Shabaab, which is essentially it's like ISIS, ISIS in in places like uh, Somalia. And it's pa it's also tax. Taxpayer, it's taxpayer money because it's money that's supposed to be going towards funding um, low-income low children for preschool and daycare programs, of course. So this is going towards uh, towards terrorism, and this is all this is all legitimate. It's all factual information. A big scandal that the media here in Minnesota wants to ignore. You don't want to ignore it. And then Keith Ellison is campaigning with the Somali people like Ilhan Omar, who is basically defending a lot of these people um, who are guilty uh, <laughs> of committing the fraud, right? So he's a bad guy. And he's campaigning with Ilhan Omar, who has called for female genital mutilation. She decided to vote against legislation that would have made female genital mutilation a felony. She voted against legislation that would have stopped the payments of, um, of aid, insurance payouts to the families of terrorists, right? She supports pay to slay. My friend Ari Fold was just killed by a Palestinian terrorist on Saturday um, in Israel, and she supports legislation to give Palestinians over $200 million in aid a year, money which they are using to pay Hamas um, to kill innocent Americans, Jews, and Israelis. So they are actually f funding and supporting terrorism. Do you guys think Keith Ellison's going to show up for this debate, or is he going to have the courage to walk through the door? He's probably watching the live stream right now. <laughs> see, guys, this is the power of social media. You see, so so the mainstream media. Is there a reporter here from CNN tonight? No. Where's CNN? Is there a reporter here from MSNBC tonight? No. Is there a reporter here from ABC News tonight? No. Is there anybody here from Fox News tonight? No. Where's the media? Is there anybody here from Is there anybody here from Star Tribune or what are some of the other fake news rags here? Is there anybody here? No. no. There are no members of the media here for the debate, the attorney general debate with Keith Ellison and, and, and uh, Doug Wardlow. This is a chance for members of the media to show up and confront Keith Ellison about the domestic abuse against women. I am the only journalist here, I'm the only journalist here tonight 
who has organized a group of people to come out here and confront Keith Ellison with factual information, a police report and medical records that show he abused women. So where is the media? Why are they giving Keith Ellison a pass? And why would they have a debate on a Friday night? I mean, look, I mean, even if the, I think the show's programming is scheduled for Fridays regardless, but like, where's the media? I'm kind of curious about the domestic abuse allegations here. Right. Forty um, percent say those allegations are a factor in how they're considering your race. Right. So, yeah. Well, let me tell you. Let's talk about Amy Alexander. That was a case in 2005 when she was harassing me and my staff. I got an order for protection to have her not do that anymore. The judge awarded that in 2006 when I was running for Congress. Uh, she filed a claim. It was denied by the judge for order of protection. And then we went to a hearing, and the judge said she was ordered to stop making the falsehoods against me and to not contact me at all. So this is not multiple cases. Now let's talk about the current one the, that we're dealing with now. Ms. Monahan. You know, look, we were in a long-term relationship. It ended two years ago, two days before the primary. She made these allegations. They're not true. I've said that they're not true. I've answered questions and gone on Esme Murphy and others to, to make these points clear. Uh, there is an ongoing uh, investigation, which we hope will conclude. Will that be done before the election? I don't know. It's an independent investigation, so I it's don't know. It's not an independent it, investigation. It's independent by your friends and, and, and fellow party members. No, it's an independent investigation. It's not an independent investigation. But, but you know, Ms, it's a good Ms, thing that the Ms. Monahan, Ms. Monahan on social media says. Outlines. I've met somebody new, uh, and I'm trying to pursue my life and move on. Uh, she, Are you confident that no one else will step forward with any other allegations? I think two credible, strong allegations of domestic abuse is enough. There's not. And I think two. that well, there there's are not, two actually, and, with, there's, and there's documentary evidence. We have a medical record where Ms. Monahan reported to her doctor the abuse that was going on, physically we and have, emotionally abused right. her. It says, and that she was worried that there'd be retribution if she identified you publicly. Let me tell you, that record was made a year after we broke up. And at a time when she was still, when, when she was essentially putting together the allegations she made two days before the, uh, the, um, the release. Well, right the record indicates that she was still traumatized.
Thank you.